Hey, beautiful friend. Welcome back to another episode of the Meant to Bloom podcast, where we talk real life motherhood struggles and simple steps to a brighter, more abundant life in mind. I'm here to walk with you on this journey to the life you're meant to be living full of peace, joy, and love. I'm your host, Brittany Clarkson, and it's time to see the world through rose colors glow rose-colored glasses. Let's make this shift happen. Today, I'm joined in a special crossover episode with Andrea Andrea Caro of Good Vanilla Podcast. And here we are having a very vulnerable, honest, and eye-opening conversation into our own personal mental illness and disordered histories. You'll hear about our journeys of self-worth, eating disorders, and how healing happened for both of us. Andrea is a wife, mother, writer, and friend. It's her mission to inspire women to pursue wellness from a foundation of faith. Andrea sees you, and she wants you to know that you are not alone in your suffering. Andrea declares that she was imprisoned by her eating disorder for over 20 years. By the grace of God, she made it out of the darkness and is here to support you on your journey to healing. Let's banish your fear of food so you can step into the life of purpose you are meant to live. You can get in touch with Andrea at www.andreacaro.com or find her on Instagram at Andrea underscore Caro. And as always, those will be linked in the description below. I hope you really enjoy this episode. We can try. Hi, friends. This is Andrea, and we are doing a, and I'm with Brittany today. We are doing a crossover episode of our podcast. So this is going to be really fun. It's Good Vanilla crossover with Meant to Bloom with Brittany. And if you don't know me, my name is Andrea Carroll. I'm an eating disorder recovery and wellness coach for Christian women. And I'm just really on a mission to help women make friends with food and their bodies and to pursue wellness from the foundation of faith. And Brittany, go ahead. Tell us who you are. Hey, I'm Brittany Clarkson. If you don't know, I'm host of Meant to Bloom, where I help moms to stress less and really enjoy your life because, oh my gosh, why are we doing this if we're not enjoying it? Um, I guess I'd call myself a mental health advocate in many ways. It's me in a nutshell. Yeah, exactly. And Brittany and I found each other mutually on through a program that we were our our students of online. And we just kind of hit it off with resonating with each other's messages and just liking the way we share and serve and want to be here and help other people. And so we have, I guess, this dual um, appreciation and love for really diving into mental health. And so we wanted to kind of dive deep into this today, really around, you know, worthiness and gratitude and and just kind of having this conversation that it feels like not, it's not happening enough or it's not being spoken in a way where it resonates. And so since we kind of, resonate with each other. We thought we'd have this conversation. Hopefully we'd be able to really connect with some, some of the listeners out there who are struggling with this. Yes. Um, and I have to say, like, I love talking about the things that people don't want to talk about, the things that make you really uncomfortable to talk about or to hear about. And I feel like when you talk about things like gratitude and self-love, as much as I try to, those feel like such fluffy light things. And I feel like when you're in such a dark place, because you're struggling with the depression and anxiety, those things feel like so distant and far away. And it like almost makes you want to vomit because, um, gross gratitude. No, my life sucks. Um, that kind of mentality. And so I feel like if we really talk about the nitty gritty, the ugly part, we don't want to talk about, we can introduce that light fluffy piece that makes you kind of sick, but it's something that you really do want and need. I know, I know what you're saying, because when I, I've been very deep in the darkness with depression, suicidal at at certain points in my life. And whenever any sort of anything that came along that what was trying to make me feel better, it's almost like I wanted to push it away. So it's like, I'm wondering people that are in this point right now or in this place, how do you take like the first step 
like what is something so that it's, it's something that's easy to do like how do you take the first step how do you accept it like how do you start receiving it's almost like we have to receive gratitude to feel it like it's do you know what I'm saying like how do you yeah. do like how do you when you don't want when it makes you feel like you want to vomit because I remember thinking that too like anytime someone's yeah. like, well, just, well just um you know think positive or do that I would get angry I'd get mad like they were like like it was so easy for them it's impossible or to me it felt impossible yeah I kind of got myself into this point where I started thinking of the negative thoughts and the depressive, like the depressive behaviors as an addiction. And when someone told me, you know, like, oh, well, you know, it just looks so easy for other people to just be happy, to just enjoy the moment. And I was like, everything sucks. I hate everything right now. And it's because I was so addicted to finding the negative and to thinking negative and to like uh, addicted to your own unworthiness, really. Mm -hmm. And like, I kind of had to hit what felt like rock bottom a number of times um, before getting help in different ways. And I would say like my final rock bottom was when I was suicidal. Like I wanted to end it all. And I had to realize, okay, I, I knew that I was like the right mom for my kids. And that's what kept me here. And then I was like, I can't keep living the same cycle here. Something has to change. And it was those negative thoughts that were just constantly like degrading myself and getting rid of my own self-worth. And, you know, I was just making myself miserable with my own thoughts. And I knew that is what had to stop. And honestly, I think like a lot of people probably have to hit their own version of rock bottom in order to decide, like, it's time to get serious about this and make a change. Um, and then I approached gratitude from a totally different way. Um, which actually, I think there was like, It's been a number of things that I've incorporated to make gratitude feel different in my life. Um, Because I remember I had this friend years and years ago who, like, she was big into gratitude and she was so bubbly and fun. And I was (laughs) like, that's what I want to be. But it felt so impossible. I was like, but when I try to do the gratitude lists, I don't feel anything. Um. And so then it was actually like, I think it was Ali Kasaza who was sharing in one of her podcast episodes or something somewhere. She did this one little exercise and I feel like that kind of opened the door for me to allow other kinds of gratitude in. And it's like, honestly, like you get dark before it gets light. (laughs) So what you did in this exercise was you think of, you know, like, like maybe three things that you're grateful for. All right. Or just think of three things because you're not feeling grateful right now. Think of three things that are good in your life. Mm. And then the next step is you walk through your day and imagine not having those. Oh, yeah. All right. Being a mom, like I pictured my kids first, pictured my house, pictured my husband. And it's like, okay, now what happens if all of those are taken away from you? Now, how does that feel? Because it's a lot easier when you're in that darkness to feel those dark feelings. It's like you try to cut off from the dark feelings and you end up cutting off from the light feelings first. Those get so much farther away, you know, in that process of trying to numb yourself. Um, And so you, you picture not having these things and let those feelings really sink in. Like it made me cry. It was like, okay, yeah, if I lost my kid, lost my house, lost my husband, that's a very different life to actually walk through. Like, what would that be like where would I where would I go what would I do what would my day look like having lost these three most important things to me now put those back in and now that you've experienced that lower feeling picture like okay how is your life better because of these things and actually start getting into the gratitude of like how you are really truly grateful for these things And that, I feel like that exercise, doing that one time, like opened the door and I was like, gratitude can work. (laughs) Now I know what that feeling feels like. So yeah, listing three things alone didn't do anything for me. Um, But doing that exercise kind of got me going farther. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the extreme of it. And I Mm -hmm. think that really aligns with like what's going on inside of you when you're in those moments of darkness, like you're so, 
you're so low, of course, it's going to take something wildly extreme to pull you out of it. And listening to you talk about the negative thoughts and how easy it was to stay in those negative thoughts, it made me think of awareness. Like, it, since it's so easy to think what we're used to over and over again, I think a lot of times we don't even recognize our thoughts that in, in connecting it to how it's impacting and influencing our lives. Because for me, in my experience, um, overcoming an eating disorder, I knew one of the number one things with making that taking that first step in healing was talk first talking about it like like I had to start speaking I had I had all this negativity bottled up inside me all this anxiety from all day long my mind running and spinning about the demands of trying to obtain perfection and trying to do what I thought I should be doing all day long. And it's like, after doing that for so many years, I couldn't hold in all that negative, all those thoughts anymore. Like I couldn't, I couldn't hold it in. And, and then I just started, it started coming out of me verbally. So like, I just naturally started talking to my husband and it, and it was, it came out with, my, the thoughts around like the, the anxious thoughts around food. Like I, I just started talking about what I ate that day. And, and he would tell me, he would sit and listen and he would tell me at the very end, Oh, you're going to be okay. And then hearing that, that was such a drastic, like I, me sharing my anxiety was like me saying, I'm not okay. <laughs> and then him telling me, you're going to be okay. And it was this moment where I started putting the pieces together of, oh, something really isn't okay here. Like this is, this needs the change. And then when I, after, so after I started talking it out, then I start, then I started having awareness over what I was thinking. And, and I think a lot of this has to do with we're like you said, Brittany, that you're just so used to thinking the same thing for so long, so so much negativity, that there has to be something that pulls you out of that. And so the rock bottom, whatever that looks like for somebody. And for me, I mean, it was a number of things before I got to the point of where I actually could share with someone that I loved and trusted, like how hurt I was inside but it didn't even come out that way right away. It was like, this is, this is something that's been going through my brain all day along with the anxiety around food. And when I was told that I was, I was going to be okay. Like it was comforting, but then the gratitude, I, I've struggled with that so much over the years, but, and then at one point I, I like that exercise that you brought up because the drastic part of that, when you were talking about removing, okay, picture your life without your kids, your husband and your home. I remember one day, this was before I had children, but I had a husband in a house. And I remember standing and washing lettuce in my kitchen sink. And I thought to myself, I, I said, I remember think, I remember thanking God for having clean water to wash my lettuce. Like, that and that to me, I would at, at one point I thought that was like silly to acknowledge that, but it was like I was I was trying to seek gratitude and feel it on such a basic level because I because here was something that I mean living in America I mean like you have access to free water like uh, my whole life something that mm -hmm. I took for granted and and zeroing in on how to be grateful for, for a resource that I've always had access to, but then acknowledging that it was there. And that, I remember that really clicked something in my mind with gratitude. And, and it was like, oh yeah, like this is what this is. Like knowing that I have it 
and I've always had it, but what would that be like to not being able to wash my lettuce with, with clean water? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Right. It's amazing how, I don't know. I always felt like every time we went around like the family, like the Thanksgiving table at dinner and we had to say something we're grateful for. I would get such anxiety about that. I was like, I hate this. This is the worst because either I felt like I was being very cliche, like, well, I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for my house. Or I was being super trivial. Like I'm thankful that we have a uh, cranberry jelly at dinner today. And it was like tuning into the gratitude and being like, it's okay to be grateful for big things and little things. Yeah. And like, there's no shame or judgment around what you're allowed to be grateful for. And that kind of opened so many doors for me. And I even started being grateful for the negative things, like the things that feel bad in my life. That changed a lot of things. Like I feel like it changes like in your brain chemistry or something like major to learn, to be grateful for the bad experiences you had. And it was after I had like that, that rock bottom and started tuning into all this gratitude. I remember one day thinking like, no, I'm so grateful for every bad, horrible, awful thing that happened to me because it led me exactly here. Like, you know, when I went through all that heartbreak in high school with my high school boyfriend breaking up with me and it felt like it was the end of the world. Um, If he hadn't done that, you know, if we hadn't finally gone through that final heartbreak, I wouldn't have met my husband a month later. Oh, wow. If I hadn't met my husband, I wouldn't have my kids. I wouldn't have my house. Like life as I know it would not have happened if I hadn't gone through the bad thing that happened to me. It's like so much good can come out of what feels bad. Mm -hmm. This, this just makes me, what you just said there is really, you know, God's plan. So I, I, my, I'm very connected with God. Like my business revolves around faith and having a relationship with God in really he like that relationship is ultimate what I tell people is ultimately the reason how I came to healing and and just what you had said you know God's plans for you are good like he can take something and make something bad and make it better like you turn it around and and I totally agree. Like that's, that's been a similar experience that I've had throughout my, my life as well is it's just in those moments, you know, what totally sucks that like in those moments, it does, it feels like this is it. Like it's never going to get, now this is the last one. He can't like, God can't do it again. Like I start to, like, I feel terrible. Cause there are times like I will doubt like my faith will waver and I will start to doubt my, my faith. And I hate that feeling. And, and then in those moments, I really have to look back at the proof of like all those times leading up to now where something bad was happening, like something bad happened and God was there and he turned it around. That's incredible. One month after you met your husband, that is so crazy. (laughs) I can't. Yeah. Yeah. That was like a long four years off and on. And it was such a headache. And looking in, looking in retrospect, I'm like, I had like zero self-worth in that whole relationship. And I had like one month of, you know, just, I don't know, recalibrating who I am. And then I met my husband and I'm like, oh, you're mine forever now this is why that happened recalibrating yeah and see that that is that is where I like to speak about too is like realigning I think a lot of this with like mental health and what I've learned with the eating with being stuck in an eating disorder for so long was a number a number there's so many things like unworthiness like I didn't I did not know my value. I did not know my worth. Um, but then also that aspect of losing myself. Like I didn't feel like myself for so long that I forgot who I was. And when you're living out of alignment of who you are, you're, you don't, 
things aren't, things don't feel well because you're not operating out of who you were created to be. Mm -hmm. And so after yeah. what you you said, you recalibrated and a month later, like that is yeah. just incredible. Yeah, it's been, it's crazy to think back on it because it was, you know, 10 years ago now. It's like, I was a different person. I've been a different person so many times between then and now, even. And yeah, it's just crazy to think the things that wouldn't exist now if those moments hadn't happened. And it's, yeah, it's crazy. The unworthiness is, I, I think that is probably a core struggle of every human being. Everywhere you look now, everyone you talk to, it seems like everyone's working on their self-worth. And it's, and it's funny to me because it's like, we all know this, but we still don't feel worthy, but we think everyone else is worthy, but we hear that they don't think they're worthy. <laughs> it's like, what is this? Like, right. why is this like a perpetual thing that we just keep doing like day in and day out? It's just it's just, it just human. Is it just because we're humans? Like it just, I don't know. I don't what know if it's because we're humans or because it's the society we were raised in. Yeah. I mean, thinking back to, you know, the cover of magazines back in 05 and what was on TV and everything to our teenage minds. I think that really concreted in that we were not good enough. We wouldn't be good enough unless we were, you know, perfect size two with big boobs and super rich husband but also make money on your own and like driving a nice car and so we had to have all the things um or you weren't good enough you need to keep striving for more yeah and I feel now that I said not good enough striving for more one other thing that has also come up that I've seen other people doing too like have you struggled with this like addiction to personal growth yes ever since like you've healed and it's like now I want to be better and better and better but it's like when are you going to decide that you're already enough and that getting better is just you know a cherry on top it's not a necessity that you keep growing and like progressing and getting better and better like you're already enough exactly as you are right now the natural involvement of things it's it's the rushing it's the urgency it's, we don't want to wait for anything. We don't have patience. Um, I, I know I struggle with patience. It's like, I feel like every day is every day of me not reaching a goal. It's like a day I missed out on it. Like it's, it just keeps adding up and it feels like it goes faster. So then I rush more, but you know what? You're right. It's like the constant striving for what's next, for what's mm -hmm. next. And not taking the time to slow down and look at where you've come from and celebrating who you are and all the wonderful things that we have accomplished up to this point and in just existing and being who like being who we are, like you said, we are enough as we are right now in this moment. We but and it it really does come down to the cultural thing and and just the way you're you're raised and how you perceive your your early life experiences mm -hmm. and and recently i've learned how much of it is actually hereditary like i didn't understand this that the way our parents and our grandparents and our great grandparents and our great great grandparents thought like they wired our brains to think this way and to operate mm -hmm. this way. And, and then it's like, oh my gosh. So now I have to figure out how to un like rewrite my story in the way I want my story to be so that I can teach this to my children so I can try to change the wiring of our brain see and then this is just the personality aspect of of caring and just the heart like I'm such a heart-centered person and I care so much and I I'm a type one on the Enneagram so I'm very much you know 
moralistic and just justice and got to do it right and let's fix this and and so I have it's a daily thing of trying to balance my personality um it's very good that I have this personality um there's there's more good there than bad because I can do a lot with it but it's it's really I really have to look at it and and remind myself to slow down because it's hard. It's hard not, it's hard not wanting to better not only yourself, because then once you have that knowledge of like it's hereditary and our thoughts are hereditary and passed down, then I start to want to change like what can I do can for I the future generation? <laughs> not only only personal development for myself, but for my family down the line. It's it gets to be a lot. And um in the aspect of being able to shut that off and be calm and like tell myself like tell yourself enough is enough it's a lot and that's why mental health like you can there's you can talk about it forever because yeah there's there's so much to dive into there is. I mean, it's, yeah, I just picture a bowl of spaghetti. Yep. There's always that spaghetti analogy where everything's intertangled and intertwined. I'm like, I literally am just imagining a bowl of spaghetti. There's some meatballs. Um, <laughs> Bunch of it all gets intertwined. Yeah. You can't untouch one thing from another. And, and then we get messy. The, and the sauce is in there and it all slides around and you think you got one thing figured out and it slips over here. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, yeah. And you're sitting there trying to clean off one noodle. Yeah. Like this will solve everything. <laughs> if I just strip the sauce off this one noodle, it's all going to be better. But I, and then, so it gets to a point where I can't, when I can't raise it anymore. I actually had a conversation yesterday with somebody that's very dear to me. And her phone call came at the most optimal time because I was actually just, I just got like done praying to God saying, man, God, this is, this has been a tough few months here mentally. And, and my, my, and personally in my life with my family, we just kind of feel stuck. We feel like we're going backwards from, we came we were up here and now we're like down here. And it's like, how do we get back up there? And she stopped me that my friend, and she told me, don't get so trapped in your feelings. You have to go into your logical brain right now and go into your truth because some, because the feelings will keep you stuck. Like it's good to look at our feelings and to acknowledge that they're there, but over analyzing them, you'd be there all day. There's a, there comes a point in time where you just have to be logical and know what is true and keep going. And I couldn't believe that her phone call came within like a half an hour after like, was like just telling God, I need something from you right now, because this is, I don't know what's happening. I need some direction. I'm, I'm an, I, and I was swimming in feelings. Like I was drowning in them. Yeah. So I loved her message of just, okay, drop the feelings, get logical right now. You know, what's true. You're a lot, you can be a lot, you can have a logical brain. And that was very helpful for me. That is crazy. Cause like last week, I feel like God kind of spoke the same thing into me. I was spiraling and like getting really overwhelmed because we'd had like, just, I was really tired. It was when we just got back from family vacation and I had this really like, just, just getting so overwhelmed coming home and things didn't go the way I had planned for them to go and expected them to go. And like, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna go take a shower. Like I laid down in my closet for like half an hour, 45 minutes. And then finally I was like, I'm just gonna take a shower. And I get in there and like the warm water is on me. And that's when I do my best thinking and make the best realizations. And I was like, I can keep over analyzing what didn't go the way I planned. And I can keep like trying to dissect why I'm feeling the way I'm feeling right now and explain it. Or I can just 
get cleaned up and go, you know, move on with my life. I can just keep on going. I can go clean up the mess. I can, I can just let things be okay. Even though this upset me, I don't have to keep dwelling on it and letting it spiral out of control. Yeah. Wow. I know. Like being okay with it is what it is. That is hard. I think because And one reason why I think this is hard is because when you start to do the self-development or the personal development and you're learning about mental health, you learn that you can create your own reality with your thoughts. So you think, Mm -hmm. so, so that's the, like you said earlier, you get up, we're, we're getting obsessed with, with that, with that idea of self-development. Okay. So if I just keep trying if I keep trying really hard to control my thoughts and think positively and be super grateful all the time and, and, and declare my worthiness all the time, like it's, I can create this reality that I, that I so desire. And it it is true, but then there are times where you just gotta, it is what it is. Like, just relax for a minute. Like just, right. I, I feel that's where I think I, I feel really, really exhausted is that striving like, okay, since I'm not there, since if I just keep focusing on it more, if I keep man, you know, visualizing, I can manifest it faster. And then when it doesn't happen, you're like, okay, I got to do more it means it, was, it wasn't enough. And then it's like, wait, that's not what this is about. It's, it's actually going to have the opposite effect. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. Okay. Step yeah. back. It's the same like addictive pattern that we get in thinking like, I'll never be happy or I'll never be small enough. And we just keep striving and striving, but we never set that goal of like, what even is enough? Mm-hmm. Like I struggled with like just unworthiness and feeling like I'll never be good enough in every sort of a way. Until I finally started questioning, what does enough even look like? Like, where's the end goal on this? Because you're just going to keep moving that goal and you're going to get, you're going to make yourself sick trying to make yourself better. So what did you do? Did you, did you define, did you define what enough was for you then? Yeah, enough. A lot of times to me, it came down to like productivity. Um, Like I really struggled in thinking that like my husband was going to leave me because I wasn't a good enough wife. Um, when I quit, like my, I used to work a full-time job and it was really exhausting on me. And then I'd come home and not do anything at home because I was exhausted from work. Like I physically did not have the capacity to keep up on any kind of housework. Um, whereas my husband was working literally twice the hours I was, and he still had the energy to do it. And then I felt really bad and really guilty. And I just had this this whole mental spiral of it all. Cause I was like, I'm not enough. And then I started staying home. And then my depression was so bad that I couldn't bring myself to keep the kitchen clean or cook dinner. And you were saying something before about talking about like when you, when you voiced your anxiety around eating with your husband and stuff, um, I almost interrupted, but I let you finish. Uh, (laughs) but I was like talking, saying things out loud really takes the power away from them in so many ways. Like whether it's just getting it out of your head. Cause I mean, if you picture how big your head is and then how big that thought is, that thought's really big in your head. But once you let out into the world, the world's a whole lot bigger. That thought can just disappear into nothing. Um, So definitely like getting those thoughts out because they seem way bigger inside your head than they really are. And when I voiced it to my husband, I was like, I just feel so bad. Like, like I felt guilty and bad making a frozen lasagna for dinner. Mm because I thought it wasn't good enough for my husband. I thought it meant I wasn't a good enough wife. And when I said that to him, he was like, are you crazy? What you made a frozen lasagna. Like I had prepared frozen food and put it in the freezer, things that I had even made from scratch. And then I felt unworthy to use that as dinner. Like I felt like it wasn't good enough. I wasn't good enough to take a pre-made meal and stick in the oven. So I'm like, but that doesn't take enough time. That doesn't take enough energy. That's not me showing up enough right now to make you dinner. He's like, I don't care. Just put something in the oven that's warm and hot for me to eat. (laughs) 
he, he did not care. And I put so much like value, like I tied my whole worth up as a human in these little experiences. And it wasn't until I started talking them out with him that he's like, that doesn't even make sense. And I'm like wanting to end my life over this. Yeah. It's the performance thing. Like I, that that's what I hear when you said that, like, I feel like I need to perform to prove that I'm worthy. Mm -hmm. And if somehow I can earn my worth through proving myself, then that's enough. Like it's, it just, it's just one of those things like when I, with the, with my eating disorder, like that was the symptom to me an eating my eating disorder was a symptom of unresolved and unregulated emotions stacked years upon years upon years upon years until things just got worse and and as i've deconstructed that as i've worked back from the eating disorder okay figured you know figured i've healed so much of that but the personality our personalities that we're born with that make us susceptible for these things to develop in, in blossom in our, like just take over our lives. That's always going to be there. So that's why we have to have the mindfulness around who we are, but then knowing our limitations and knowing what is enough for us. And like you said, identifying that because we don't do it for ourselves. We look at what other people are doing. We compare and we say, well, it'll be enough. It'll be, I'll be enough when I look like them, when I have what they have, then that's enough. When we, when we have no idea really what, what their lives are other than what we can see on the outside. Cause I always Mm -hmm. say that our bodies are a distraction. Like the eating disorder is the distraction from what is actually going on. Like we focus on the physical and what we can see, but really what, what needs the attention is like our soul. And that, that needs to be healed. It's like crying out, but we've ignored it for so long that it's morphed into this thing. That's so much bigger. Yeah. And it's all, spaghetti it's all we're back to eating spaghetti spaghetti getting bigger and then there's just a bigger bowl of spaghetti it's it's the jumbo size it's it's one thing morphing into another and we get like i'm all tangled up in this bit over here but it's really this thing over here that's the issue in my life Mm -hmm. i guess i want people to understand like how normal this is oh yeah like it's normal to feel like you're going crazy because of all these, like all these things that we're talking about, like how many times in your life or even last week, have you thought, am I going crazy? Cause my thoughts are mm-hmm. just spinning and spinning and I feel, and it's, it's normal. It's a normal thing. Right. I, cause I, I told my, I, I go to a talk, I go to a therapist and I remember I, t- I, t- I told him, I was like, well, it'd be nice if it would just stop. He said, well, be careful with what you wish for, because if you, if it would just stop, that would mean you're dead. So mm-hmm. <laughs> he said, so you can't wish that, that your thoughts would just stop or your, your caught, co- your conscious flow, your stream, your conscious stream would stop because then, then you're dead. So you can't, <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah. Okay. See, there's the gratitude again, right? The extreme. Right. I'm so grateful for these racing thoughts because I'm alive. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Right. Well, it's even like your anxiety. If you're like, well, I just wish my anxiety, my anxious thoughts would go away. Okay. Well, if all your anxious thoughts go away, all your fears go away, all those like warning signs in your head go away. And suddenly like, where are you when there's no internal warning of like, Hey, this is a dangerous situation. Yeah. I don't know why I'm picturing like just running with bears. (laughs) That's where my brain went. I'm just like I'm, I'm. I'm about to fight a bear. That's what I'm doing. If if there's no internal warning to stop me to say this is a bad idea, this is dangerous. Yeah. You should feel anxious about this. 
<laughs> yeah, just don't go up and start duking it out with a bear. Right. Yeah. Okay. Fighting a mama bear to take her cubs to be your pets is probably not a good idea. <laughs> like, that is dangerous. You should feel nervous right now. You should feel anxious. You should. Oh my gosh. I know. I know. So it's, it's really, so then it's like, okay, so is there like a, what, do you have like a daily practice? What is enough mindfulness then? Because if we can get obsessed with, with personal development and being so focused on our thoughts and trying to manifest the reality of happiness and joy and like, what is a daily, like, what's enough? Like, what's enough for mental health? Like, how do you, that's what I'm wondering. Like, yeah. To me, it's not like a daily practice that says it's enough. Um, it's more yeah. like being self-aware, learning to start paying attention to what you're doing, how often you're doing it, when you're doing it. Is this actually helping me? Or am I going, you know, overboard? Is this too much? Um, like, am I sacrificing time with my family in order to have, you know, enough self-care that I'm relaxed? Mm -hmm. But then you end up with the disconnect from your family and it ends up like hurting your soul because you need them. Um, you can't just isolate yourself in self-care and mm -hmm. have it help your mental health. It's all about like the balance and all of that stuff. But I would say like... There is one like mantra that tends to come back to me a lot. And that's one thing at a time or like one thing is enough. Oh. Um, and I practice this like in my business a lot when I feel like I'm spending too much time at my computer, just trying to be busy doing something. And I tell myself, if I do one thing a day, that's enough. And then I can stop. And if I feel like I'm really overwhelmed by my house, like if I do one thing, that's enough. And then I can stop and move on to like some other part of my life that feels like it needs more attention right now. You know? Yeah. There's so some days I don't do all the laundry, but if I wash and dry a load, it's enough. We, we have, everyone has clean socks and clean underwear at that point. That's enough. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be perfect because it never will be. And when you said the one thing, it, rem it reminds me of something I learned years ago the next right thing. Oh, I can't remember who she is, but she's actually like an author and she has a Emily P. Freeman. There we go. There we go. You got it right there because I have, I'm subscribed to her podcast and it's called the next right thing. And I remember that's kind of that. That's very helpful. Like, because when all the things hit you at once, okay, what's the, in this moment, what's the next right thing? Like you're focusing on the one thing. Mm -hmm. It helps me too sometimes when I just ask myself what I want because mm -hmm. all the shoulds, like, cause I, I pretty much my whole life, I've been operating every day on mm -hmm. all the things I should be doing. And years ago I realized, oh my gosh, I don't know if I did things that I wanted to do. I just did things that I thought I should be doing. So what do I want? Like right now, like when I'm feeling when I'm feeling like my anxiety levels are raising and like, you just feel jittery inside, like your heart rate is picking up. It's like, okay, something's not right. Like, what do I want right now? Like letting myself, letting my internal wisdom come out and speak to me. And yes. I also think that in things that I have been learning lately is that as everyone says, life is a journey. It's not a destination. It's something that we practice. So we practice on a day to day. What's working? What isn't working? Like finding each person needs to find their own thing. And it's good to learn from others and listen and get ideas and then practice it. See what sticks, what, what was helpful, what wasn't, or maybe you need to tweak it for yourself and hold on to that. But being curious enough to practice and, and to keep in asking yourself those questions. I like how you would ask yourself questions like, well, what is enough? And 
almost playing the devil's advocate sometimes. Like when you have something in your head going, well, you need to do this. And then if you stop and ask, what would happen if I didn't do it? Well, I don't know. I'm going to get curious. I'm going to find out like being almost like playful. Like we take ourselves way too seriously. I think Mm -hmm. allowing ourselves the space to play and to be curious and just experiment. Yes. And with healing from an eating disorder, I actually call it active recovery because healing isn't linear and Mm -hmm. neither is like this mental health journey. It's not linear. Like things will come up along the path. So it's like, as long as you're actively, you know, you're, you're actively open to receiving help. You're open to making those adjustments and just trying different things. I think that's helpful. Yes. And mentioning that it's not linear, that gives me another like visual mindset. Like I'm a really visual thinker, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, But there was one little like mental tweak I made that like it really boosted things for me because I felt like I was in such a cycle so long. And I've heard other people talk about how like, you know, I was like, it feels like you're not making progress when you keep coming back to the same battle again. And what you have to stop seeing is like, you're not running on like a hamster wheel or you're not going around in circles. You're going up a spiral staircase. So every time you're coming back to that battle, you are elevated above where you were before Oh wow! because you're never going to be the same person facing the same battle. You're better. You're better equipped. You've learned more since then. It's going to be a little bit different. It might even be more challenging going up the spiral staircase or if it helps to imagine like it's like super mario bros every level is basically exactly the same but it gets harder and harder and you get better and better as you play them all yeah and to me that really helps like okay when i'm coming up to another issue that feels like i've already overcome this like i can do this it is different i'm not stepping backwards this is still moving forward yeah, with the practice, you get, you build that confidence, you mm-hmm. build confidence and you get that evidence of, of what you've come to, what you've overcame up to this point. And, and in, and with my coaching, I like to say grit and grace. Like I love, you have, you have the grit to keep going, like the fight for, you know just fighting for your life and fighting to to make things better for yourself but at the same time extending yourself that grace absolutely it just we need we need both spectrums we need the grit we need the grace Mm -hmm. we need need it all and that that's I'm very visual too like I really like that that spiral staircase like I can see it because that's another thing we learn about right like they always say elevating up like up leveling and then Mm -hmm. I feel the same thing too like every time I go up it's still I'm coming up against that unworthiness and just because I just because I got rid of it or I've conquered it on this bottom level it's gonna it's gonna come up to try to challenge me again in the next level up right but it's like having that gratitude of and that self-awareness of realizing that you're farther along than you were last time. I feel like that helps you like, yeah, it gives you the confidence. It helps you hold on longer. It helps you like realize you're not stuck in the same spot over and over again. Cause that can be a really defeating thought thinking like, oh, I'm struggling with this again. So it means I haven't overcome it before when yes, you did overcome it. You're just going to have to overcome it again. Yeah, no, that's very helpful for what for things I'm going through right now, like having that realization, because it's easy to do that. It's easy to say, oh yeah, look, here I am again. I just can't do it. See, I'm not meant for this or type of thing. And it's, ah, that's some good stuff. That's some good stuff. And just knowing that like God, if he's called you to do something, he's going to see you through it. Like he's equipping you, he's equipping you to do it, like to take it on, to overcome it. And 
that's one thing I like to, to visual. I like to visualize like God going ahead, ahead of me and like doing, taking care of the battle before, like he's already gone ahead of me and has done it. Like he's already paved the way. Absolutely. There was one other thing that's always helped me is remembering like he doesn't call the qualified he qualifies the called yes or you are qualified because you are called not you are called because you're qualified like Mm -hmm. if if god puts it in your life if he puts it on your heart he's gonna equip you i just read that again recently too i saw that somewhere i was like oh yeah i needed to be reminded of that because that's that worthiness we feel like we're not qualified we feel um like we're frauds, like we're imposters, like, Mm -hmm. and so, so it's, you need that reminder. Yeah. Well, sometimes you also think like that to start speaking up and saying something about like where you've been and, you know, just even to like reach your hand out to the woman next to you and be like, Hey, I've experienced this too. Or here's what helped me. Like so often we get in our heads thinking like, well, I don't know enough to say anything. And we think like you've you've got to be PhD level in order to start telling your story. When it's like you you are the expert on your own life. And it's okay to admit that you're still learning along the way. It's okay to not know everything. Because nobody does. No. That's just it. And but you know when like you said, but you're the expert in and who are you? What could what what are you keeping by not sharing like what are you keeping from someone that that's that's that weighs on me that's why I started my business because I feel this sense of responsibility like well what if something I say what if sharing my message can help help people reclaim their lives yeah and because I visual I, I just like imagine myself still stuck and Mm -hmm. and it and it really makes me angry it makes me very sad knowing the number of people out there that just are are stuck in the relationships with food and their body and they're just and that's all their life is and we're our lives are so much more and yeah And the fact, and the fact that we're sharing, like, cause we each have our own business. Mm -hmm. We're sharing our life experiences. We're the expertise in our life. We're the experts in our lives. And we have so much to offer and we can help so many people. And I think that's incredibly brave. (laughs) I think that's, And especially talking about topics that we talk about that are so vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And it's like, honestly, I feel like when I was in my darkest place, I don't feel like I could have learned from someone who is super light and bubbly and like hasn't had a struggle in so many years. Like, you know, if someone overcame it 10 years ago, like you get really distanced from that issue and that problem. And so it gets really hard for someone who's still struggling to, to relate to that and to like learn from it because you just look at it and you're like, that's an impossibility. That's way too far away. I can't get to that level. And again, I visualize a staircase. Um, Like this is just how I visualize like women helping women. It's, it's a staircase and the woman at the top can't help the woman at the bottom. Mm. You, wherever you are, can turn back and help the woman who's one step, two steps behind you. You can physically reach back and grab her hand and tell her exactly where you just stepped and help her step. Mm -hmm. And it's such a more like looking forward. It's a lot more realistic to grab from the woman who's right in front of you than the one who's at the top. Yeah. So then right now in your business, how are you turning and extending what do you have going on right now are you oh like yeah do you have like because I saw you had something posted um you have all you had these great resources a while back you're real and I was like oh my gosh I gotta sign up for that 
Was that a workshop again? Or is that a- Is it the Mindset Realign? Maybe. The one I just posted? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, so the Mindset Realign is actually like, it's a really great resource. I've turned back to it a dozen times at least. Um, it's really great. It's only five bucks. It used to be a challenge that I would host and then I created like a whole workbook and then I recorded videos for it. So it's actually like a, a self-paced five-day course okay. that you can do. Okay. Yeah. And it just gets you thinking, like putting your focus where it really belongs. It gets you questioning. What are you even thinking about checking in with that mindset of, are you even living a life of intention? Are you practicing gratitude? Um, it's got those kinds of things in it just to, it's a real mindset check. It really, it's what it says. Mindset realign. Um, yeah. yeah, I know. I saw that. I was like, this is, this is a great, great co- bundle of resources here. I was like, I'm going to have to check in on that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. I thought I lost audio for a second. Nope. Just have some, I have my daughters walking into the room I here. Mute. I had a mute earlier. My kids were screaming at the doorway. Yeah. This is. This is mom entrepreneur life. It is. At its finest. Oh, I love it. Yep, things don't have to be perfect to be good. (laughs) No. Okay, I'm back. I'm yeah. back. We got a nine-year-old and a five-year-old. They're disagreeing on the music choice to dance to. Music choice, how loud? Oh, how loud it is. You girls are fine. Right now, you're loud. That's what's loud. Can you hear the music? No, nope, the, the music's great. I love the sound of the music. <laughs> we must be at the end of our time. Because I think so. Yeah, we got expiring children here. Yeah. Need need mom need mom's attention soon. But this has been a great this has been a great conversation. I love how deep we went. I love how many things we touched on. And I loved how real and vulnerable this conversation was. It needs, yeah. to, it needs to, it needs to, it needs to happen and it needs really to, does. and it need and people need to know that it's okay to have these conversations. This yeah. is a normal and mental health is health. It is. I'm very passionate about health and wellness and mental health is part of that. It's, oh, yeah. it's all connected. And I mean, in some ways, mental health can be like the most important when you're trying to seek health and wellness. Because like if your mental, if your mindset's not right, if your mental health isn't right going into it, you're not going to get the benefits and the effects out of everything else that you want. That, that was my experience because when I started working out when I was 14, I did it. I did it because I didn't like the way I looked. Mm -hmm. I I did it out of, of self-loathing. I didn't approach it. I didn't start it out of a form of self-love and wanting, you know, to feel better. I did it out of a a place of self-hate. So I know that if I would have approached it differently, my journey would have looked so much different because once I started working, then it just, it really just, um, that's how my eating disorder developed. I got very Mm -hmm. obsessive about it and I wanted to see how, how far I could take it. How much more could I lose? How can I do this? So exactly the mental health, the mental health is the, and then at the base of that, I say faith is the foundation of even that. And that's what it is for me. That's like my core and then my beliefs in my business is faith is the foundation of wellness. And and that's where everything stems from. So but, Absolutely. but yeah, so this is, this has been great, Brittany. And I, we should do this again because we'll, well, I know we'll come up with some, we'll be watching each other's reels on Instagram yeah. and you guys need to go follow Brittany and I will, 
we'll in show notes we'll put stuff yep, in there for people we'll get our link we'll get our instagram handles in there and we'll put in you'll have to get the link for your your um met the real line that'd be oh, yeah. awesome i can get that yeah and i'm also going to have a free download i ha- i made a speak life bundle where um it and it's i you normally charge 27 dollars for it but i'm going to i'm going to give it to the audience for free and that is there's three prayers that i wrote and then 54 affirmation cards and it's just to replace the negative with the positive and oh place it with god's truth oh so so that's we'll get all that in the show notes but this has been awesome and i hope every share this episode with with people that need to hear this message because right. it's real with the kids and all with all the with the children interrupting and everything it's yep. <laughs> it's real <laughs> It really is. Do you have anything yeah. else you want to say, Brittany, before we shut off here or close out the conversation? Just that typical reminder that you know you're already enough. You don't have to keep growing or striving for anything else. Like, act from a place of peace and love for yourself. Yep. Are you not going to get the results that you want? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. couldn't have said it better all right all right we'll we'll say bye 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 hey friend are you feeling like you are struggling with this daily battle for your sanity are you feeling like you've lost yourself like you're just in the chaos like there's not a moment to enjoy yourself mama i feel you In June of 2020, I almost ended my own life because I was stuck in bad mental health habits. And I just, I let everything get to me. I really did. I was making dinner and the kids were being really loud and I had not been taking care of myself. So I let these negative thoughts seep in and I convinced myself that I just shouldn't be there anymore. Luckily, I was saved. I was it's a long story, long story short, I decided that day that I was going to make a change and I was going to do something different. And that took a lot of work and it took a lot of commitment. But what I did is I learned how to become mindful in my life. I learned grounding practices. I got into new healthy patterns. I started taking care of myself so that I could show up for other people. I started believing better things about myself. I started becoming worthy because I decided I was worthy. I stepped into the life that I was meant to be living because I fixed my mindset. I decided I wasn't going to be anxious and stressed anymore. I was going to do something about it. I took steps for proactive mental health. I started building bridges over those pits of depression instead of building ladders out of them and I started avoiding those really terrible negative feelings I stopped letting my negative thoughts about myself pull me down and hold me back I started living the life that I was meant for and I found my voice I found my purpose I carefully curated the life that I actually want to be living Because I decided I was enough for that life. And all of these practices that I started putting into place, the mindfulness, the intentionality, overcoming negative thinking, overcoming stress and anxiety, using affirmations, getting grounded in gratitude, setting goals for myself. I started creating the life I wanted to live. And I took all of those exercises and I put those into the happy mom brain. And I made it something that can help every other mom out there to find your sanity, to find yourself, to find your peace, to find your joy, to live the life you actually want to be living as a happy mom, because it's possible. As much as I thought that was an oxymoron back back then, I have found that you can be happy in your motherhood. And a lot of it stems from knowing what motherhood is and what it means to you and what your priorities are, what's actually important to you in life. 
Mama, if you want the happy mom brain, there's a link in the description. You can always go to brittanyclarkson.com forward slash happy mom or search on Amazon for the happy mom brain. Love you, friend.